Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. Today we're going to be checking out the Solval SV01 Pro. This is my first time looking at this brand, so I'm pretty excited to see what their latest printer has to offer. So in this video, we're going to unbox it, set it up, and do some prints. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. All right, guys. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to check this printer out. I've heard of this company before, and this is their newest version, which is the SV01 Pro. So this is the box that it comes in. It's actually a pretty decent size. On this side here, we can see a picture of what the printer looks like. And here we have the dimensions of the box in centimeters, about 57 by 56 by 23. And the shipping label says it weighs about 21 pounds. So let's go ahead and open it up. And this is what we see on top. So we got soft to black foam. Let's go ahead and take the first layer off here. So it is formed on the top and yeah, it looks like very well packed. All right, so we got a sheet of paper that got kind of crunched a bit, but no big deal. So this is our contents inside the box. And then like a quick installation guide step by step to get started and then of course you do get the full manual here's all the basic parameters and naturally we have the installation instructions in here also and obviously we got a lot more detail of how to operate the printer all right guys so i'm just going to pull things out of the top so we do get a spool of filament 200 grams in white pla i like how they included a spool very nice we got our touch screen display. It's in its own little housing. This is where we're going to plug it in. And we can also hear the little speaker beeper and some pre-mounted hardware here. So yeah, nice size display. Here we have the spool holder and it looks like it's pre-assembled pretty much. Yeah, they went ahead and assembled it for you. And it does look like the kind that clip in molded material. Yeah, it feels heavy duty. And here we have the filament detector already attached to it. So here we have a box. So we get some snippers some hardware which are four long bolts and these are going to be used for connecting the gantry to the base a bag of tools some allen wrenches flat screwdriver and a couple open-ended wrenches we also get a spatula and it is sharpened in this baggie we have a clean out needle and an extra nozzle looks like 0.4 millimeter pack of zip ties and two end caps usb card reader with the micro sd card in it and the last part here is our power cord us type all right so let's go deeper so the next part here we have the gantry and it is tethered to the base so we're gonna have to pull out some foam here and you guys probably can't see anything but the only thing left down here is our base just the bottom portion of the printer and first thing that stands out is this flexible build plate and i haven't seen this being used for a while most everyone moved to the ultra base style beds with the perforated dimples this really reminds me of the uh, ender 3 pro but the great thing about these build plates is they're very easy to use and super easy to peel off the prints so but i'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way so we can get this box out of here and that was everything that was inside of it all right so we cleaned up here a bit and we got the printer on the table and i'm definitely liking what i'm seeing so far but we'll go over all the details a little bit later in the video what i want to do next is flip this thing around and under here you guys can see we're separated in two sections and we actually have a bridge here so i'm going to go ahead and take these covers off so we can see a little better what's inside 
All right, so we got all the little bolts out. Now, if you guys notice on some of them, there's like a little circle silver. That's actually where the longer bolts go and the shorter ones go everywhere else. All right, so these covers should just come off. So on this one, we do have a fan that's connected to the cover and we'll just lay it here to the side and the other cover. So let's take a closer look here and there's quite a few interesting things. So under this side here, we have the main board and then a lot of empty space. So if you did want to do some modifications, there's plenty of room for that. Now, if it was my choice, I would actually like if they added a little storage bin here, but that definitely adds more complexity and whatnot else, but there is room for that here. So overall, the frame is built very well and it's got like this H pattern. So we got two rails like this and then two through the middle and everything is metal, even this covering here. We can see the middle is just kind of a hole. You can see our bed rollers there. Here we have that bridge I was talking about. There's just wires running from one side to the other and our power supply is on this side. So over here is where the power comes in and then out the supply into the main board. And probably the most interesting part to me about this printer is that it does have a Creality branded power supply and it is 24 volts, 14.6 amps. So it should be the 350 watt. Your voltage selection is on this side here and you definitely don't want to forget. Check that. And over here we have the Y motor with the in stop switch. So I find that quite interesting that if we go to the main board here, maybe you guys can see there, we also have a Creality board and it's the version 4.2.2, which is, I believe the same one as the Ender 3 version two. So all the steppers are integrated and they are heat synced. We do have a fan that blows on the board and cools it off. All the connections are glued and everything is nicely routed and looks great. So here we have a great example of a company using Creality Electronics to run their printer. Now it might be possible that Solvo is part of Creality somehow that I just didn't know about. But yeah, I find it quite interesting that it does use the main components from Creality. So I'm going to put these covers back on. We'll flip it around and start the assembly. All right, so let's go ahead and put this thing together. So we're going to use the quick start guide here. For step one, we're going to connect the gantry to the base with these four bolts. And that's these long bolts we saw earlier. Yeah, this is pretty simple, guys. So we're going to grab the upper portion of the printer. You guys can see there's a little slot there that it'll just sit right into and it should slide right in just like that. So I lowered you down guys a bit so maybe you could see better, but yeah, it just literally just slots in there and sits. And then we're gonna take our bolt, a couple bolts, and we're gonna start them on there. So we're gonna use the largest wrench that was included, tighten them up. So I'm not gonna full tighten them, just kinda snug a little bit and let's do the other side. The so same thing here. You might have to move the gantry up or down a little bit to find the threads. We can go ahead and tighten this side pretty good. Now you don't want to go too tight on this kind of design because most of the job for the bolts is just compresses to the side to hold the gantry. And I really like this design because it's quite rigid because of the slotting in. Snug these up. And that's it. And our gantry is connected to the base. So for step two, we're gonna install the spool holder and that goes on the top. So this is what our spool holder looks like and it just clips on there. Nothing that we have to screw on or anything like that. And our filament detection is already on it. This being the front here, it's gonna set it like this and go down and it just clips in. And maybe you guys can see we have a wire here, so be careful not to smash it if it's like, you know, in the way. And this wire is actually for the detector. And I guess we can go ahead and plug it in. So our spool will go here and then our filament will feed through the detector down into the extruder. So yeah guys, after looking at the spool holder a little more, I'm thinking maybe the filament detector goes to the front like this. And it may be a good idea to slide this to the side a bit so we can kind of center the feeding. That will have an even range to reach on either side. All right, for step three, we're gonna be installing the screen and that's actually simpler than it looks. And that's because it clicks in right into this bracket here. And on the screen, the little bolts on the back, that's what slots into these loops here. So yeah, the only thing we would need to do is plug it in here on the back, which is straightforward. And now just kind of run our cable where it's happy, line up those little bolts into the grooves and then kind of go down to click in. And that's it. So it just literally slots in and then you can pull it out. And if your screen is kind of a little loose like mine is, we can grab the included flat screwdriver and actually tighten these little bolts up if they're not tightened all the way. And that's gonna, you know, give it a little better clearance there. And not wobble as much, which mine's pretty good now. 
and it looks really nice here on the side so for step four we're going to connect everything and here they kind of go through a lot of little things and give you tips on getting started and also checking your voltage and we're going to do all that so most everything is pre-built and plugged so we got the screen here plugged in in the front let's go to this side so here we have a wire and it's a labeled a z2 because there's two lead screws so this one plugs in right here so our y is completely connected we got our other z motor here which will be this z1 wire and then over here we have some wires that come down from the top and that's actually from the filament detector and then we got another wire coming from the base and we're just going to connect those two together just like that and believe it or not guys that is everything that we need to connect around the printer so the next thing we need to do is check all our belts and rollers and we'll start here with the bed but before we do that let's go ahead and run up the x platform here up on the z and we're just going to spin the couplers here on the back together and just a little bit here to get it out of the way and we probably should have done this before we installed the screen which is not a big deal because we could just clip it right off but yeah, if we look here at the bed, guys, you can see there we have one eccentric nut. So the way this one works here is we have three rollers on each side, which does complicate things a little because we have two stationary here and then the adjustable in the middle. And then on the other side, we have two adjustable and then stationary in the middle. So we'll go on this side first where there's two stationaries. And the first thing you want to do is roll the bed around and see if maybe you're too tight. And for sure I am because I have severe steps in my roll. Like right here, it just grabs and doesn't move. So, so another way you can do it is stick your hand under there and kind of spin the roller but they're really far deep in there and kind of hard to reach but if I reach in there and spin the middle roller it's completely loose it's not even touching the <laughs> bed so we're gonna grab our open-ended wrench and stick it in there and try to turn that eccentric nut and that's gonna make the wheel go farther or closer away so on this one here we need it closer so and it's really hard to see on this printer guys but yeah but we are now touching the rail and there's some friction on there so now we can spin around I'm going to put this screen back on for now. Our adjustable one is over here and then one over here. And so what I like to do is stick my hand in there and try to see if I can spin them. And I definitely cannot spin them by hand. So that means they are way too tight. So the center is actually decent, which I know the one on the other side is pretty decent. So we just need to loosen these two to kind of relieve the pressure. And unfortunately, guys, not only is it hard to see, reach it with this short wrench. So the one in the front is actually easy to reach from the front. And we could actually roll completely to the front and even have better access to it here. So finally we're there and we're actually pretty good on the front. Check the center, pretty good on the center and pretty good on the back. So you want to be loose enough where the wheels can kind of do a little burnout on the channel, but not too loose where it wobbles. So we don't have no wobble. So we're tight enough, but we're loose enough where we're not pinching too hard around the channel, which will wear out the rollers really fast. And also roll not good with like steps. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. Oh yeah, so much better. Actually perfect. It's smooth as butter now. So yeah, I'm happy of where this is now. If you do need to keep adjusting, you know, definitely take your time and get this right. All right, so I think we're good there. Now all we gotta do is check our belt, which is right here. It's actually pretty good tension, but we do have adjustable knobs here that we can spin to make it tighter or looser. I do prefer looser than tighter because if you're really tight, it could lead to other problems. And plus, you know, you're just stressing everything out when it's too tight. And don't forget that this belt is quite long, so over tightening it is not a good idea. And now we're going to do our hot end. And so here you'll be able to see a little better how to adjust things. But yeah, what I like to do is just grab the rollers here and kind of try to spin them with my hand. And I can spin these pretty good. They are a little tight, but they do spin. But they're too tough, so I need to loosen it just a little bit. And our eccentric nuts down here. So we got two stationary and then an adjustable on the bottom. So we're going to try to loosen this up a bit. Might need to go up just a little bit. And so you want to kind of move it until these rollers are reasonably easy. You do want some friction, but not too much. Now we do have a pretty heavy hot end with the drive extruder with the motor and everything there so you want to make these a little bit tighter because you do have quite a bit of weight here that needs to be carried so yeah if your rollers are spinning and you're happy with the motion then you're all done here now there are rollers on the ends here and these normally you don't want to mess with unless they're just way off i wouldn't worry about these too much guys unless you know you think something is seriously wrong they're most likely fine and there's not much adjustability here anyways but yeah guys that's pretty much how you adjust and i did forget to check the belt on this x-axis which by the way the tensioner is on this side so yeah same thing that we talked about looser is better than tighter and i think i'm pretty happy with this one here 
Yeah, just if you roll it around, you can kind of feel it. So if you're not like smooth, smooth, that means something's wrong somewhere. Either the belts are maybe too tight or maybe too loose or maybe they're not running true on their gears, pulleys. So you want to check as much as you can to, you know, get it smooth. So for the next part, let's take a closer look at all the details of the printer. So starting on top here, we have the spool holder, our filament detector. And like we saw earlier, the spool holder just clips in really easy to remove and slide around if you need to. Nice channels logo i like the finish on them on the top here we have brackets that hold the lead screws on top and they are with bearings so this gives support for the lead screw looking at the back we can see we have a dual lead screws with the dual motors now what's interesting is that they're not tethered on the top with a belt and normally i like the tether kind because it does synchronize them but most of the time the individual ones actually work pretty well and we'll see how consistent they are when we print spiralized mode all the way up so everything is metal around the printer as far as frame is concerned we got brass bushings here going down coupler with the motors and pretty much same thing here on this side and this is our x-axis motor which there you can see the gear and the x-axis and step switch so this is the back of our hot end assembly and we'll look at it here closer in a second the wiring comes out and it's actually strained relief there it's even bolted down to the carriage very nice and we do have this weaved sleeve that holds all the wires and then they just go down and to the back of the printer. And then out of the back, there's another wire that goes to the heated bed, which is also strained relieved very nicely. At the very bottom, this is where our power supply is. Y channel, the Y motor, and the end stop switch was just inside of there. And they do have a little cutout here in the back, so you can look at the gear and see how your belt is running. And right below that, guys, is probably one of the more important things that you need to check before you do anything else, is this voltage. And we're able to switch it from 115 to 230. And I don't know if you guys can see, but mine is set to 230. I I need to switch that because I am on the 115 voltage so I'm just gonna grab the screwdriver that came with the printer and push it over to the 115 voltage that I need. So make sure you check that before you power on the printer. So the edges have these nice end caps on both sides. And speaking of end caps, we totally forgot to install the ones on here and they do clip in there if you want to install them. Back to the front, let's take a closer look at the hot end assembly. So we do have a direct drive extruder. So that just means everything is integrated together, the extruder and the hot end. This is where we're going to feed the filament and it's literally going to go from the top down. And what's impressive, and I don't know how well you guys can see, but everything is metal here, including this arm here. So it's like an all metal extruder assembly. And so this is the motor that runs the extruder gear, which turns and pushes the filament down into the hot end. And on this side, we have the heat break cooling fan. And also also a reality CR touch which is quite interesting that it comes standard with a CR touch on this printer so yeah as you guys can see this printer uses a lot of creality parts including the outer bed leveling and by the way this is our adjuster for the tension on the extruder so on the front we have a pretty large blower fan with a cooling duct that goes right underneath the tip of the nozzle pretty impressed that they used the large one here so we should have a great cooling not too much going on here. Just have the stepper motor and underneath that's our heat block. It is insulated with a silicone sock and yeah, it just looks like pretty nicely built. And the cable management on this thing is great because it looks very nice and clean and you just have this one cable coming out. So yeah, they did a great job here on the direct drive extruder assembly. So it does run on this 2020 channel and this is where we adjust the belt. Here's our Y end stop switch. Going down from there, we got our bed and the printing volume is 280 by 240 by 300 and this whole part here is a magnetic sheet and underneath we have a aluminum heated bed that is insulated and very nice to see on this large bed as it will heat up quickly so the bed frame is thick got large knobs to adjust each corner nice quality springs and there you guys can see our rollers on both sides go ahead and put the sheet back so you do kind of have to line it up because it magnetizes to certain places so here on the front we have the manufacturing label the printer name sv01 pro the build volume the machine size the power supply wattage 350 rated voltages which is adjustable in the back and the weight 9.8 kilograms from the label down you can see this is where we're going to insert our micro sd card to bring files into the printer and also we have a micro sd slot there to connect the printer to the computer on the y rail on the front this is where we we're gonna adjust our tension and heading this way is our display screen very nice large size let's go ahead and peel this protector which kind of honestly I'm fascinated by these plastic coverings especially when they don't want to come out 
you know, that's what you get if you try to pull it out. So, you know, I'd rather them shrink wrap it or something than do this. This is not a great experience. And now I think I need to get a knife and kind of cut it around to make it clean. So if we go to the right, we can see the display is tilted 45 degrees. So really good angle to look at. And that's pretty much all here. And on the left side, it's pretty clean here, except for when we get to the back, we have our mains input, which is fused and an on and off switch. And also we get pretty large rubber squishy feet on all four corners, which I really like to see because it'll help with the noise and vibration. But yeah, overall the printer is looking really nice and promising. I love that they put a lot of energy into this area here and we do have all Creality Electronics. So I'm really thinking we're going to get great results with our prints. So I'm going to cut off this plastic off the screen. We'll plug it in and power it on. All right, so I got the printer plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn it on and hit the power switch. All right, so it powers up. You can see it says SV01 Pro and it booted up. Actually a very quick startup. So you guys probably can't see the screen at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to home this thing. So I'll click on home. Very cool animations. We're gonna take a look at here in a second. But yeah, it looks like our X is good. Now our Y, also good. And now the Z, which it is using the probe to measure. So I just want to make sure the axes work before we do the bed leveling because that's what we're going to need to do next. All right, so it looks like it used the CR touch there as the Z in stop switch. And also I'm going to go ahead and preheat it and they do have hot buttons for everything. So yeah, excellently laid out the whole thing. So I really like the screen so far. So we know our motors and switches work and also it is preheating, which it's getting hot already. So let's go ahead and manually level the bed, which is the first thing you want to do. And then after we do that, we're going to auto bed level it where the probe is going to go around and take the measurements all around the bed. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see the screen, but I'll just tell you what I'm doing and then later we'll go through all the details of it so in the home page or the middle button here on the bottom we have a bed leveling and so if we click on that it's going to set us up for manual leveling so you want to do the manual leveling first before you do the out of bed leveling and now we're going to click on AUX leveling and so it's going to bring up five points to click on around the bed and we're just going to click around and level each corner and then we can check the middle if we want at the end which doesn't really matter because we have out of bed level so let's go ahead and start with this corner here we're going to bring our piece of paper here so i am using a sticky note to do the gap and yeah we're just going to go around and roughly set the bed level on each corner so again you want to make sure that you're preheated and you want to go around at least two or three times when you change one corner, another corner moves also, so. So the closer you get it, the better, then the out of bed leveling won't have to compensate as much. But we're pretty close at this point. So definitely close enough now where it's very even between the four points. So let's go to the middle for fun and see what it looks like. It is a little low, but that doesn't matter because the out of bed leveling sensor will compensate for it. So once we're done with that, we're going to go back and click on out of bed leveling and it's going to measure the bed. And so when it's printing, it's going to be able to offset itself as it's going through the bed. All right, so it's finished. Maybe you guys can see we have all these new parameters in here and it's actually all pretty close. Like I think we're deviated at the most of about 0.3 to 0.4. So yeah, the bed is very level at this point. Now, if you see these numbers thrown off quite a bit, that means you're probably not as level as you can be manually. So go back and do the AUX leveling and get it as flat as possible. Let's go ahead and load the filament. So we'll use this white PLA that came with the printer. And again, super cool that it's on a spool. So you want to cut your filament on an angle so it can feed easier. Simply going to put the spool on the spool holder and go through the detector. And by the way, it does glow a little blue light here as the spool feeds kind of like in a loop down to it. And then we're going to go into the extruder by pushing on the arm here and then feeding it inside down out the hot end. And it should purge here. And we'll just push it ourselves down until we see white which is what we got so yeah pretty simple because this is direct drive very simple to put the filament in and out so let's grab our little sd card that does come with this usb adapter even the sd card looks like the creality ones and it's going to plug in right here in the front most likely upside down 
Yep, sure enough. And we'll jump here to the screen and take a closer look at it. So on the top we have the company name, and then a toggle switch, and this actually toggles from light to dark, and I definitely prefer the dark. That's a pretty cool option. So on the bottom, if you see, we have main kind of like pages. So this is where it starts, kind of like home, and you have your nozzle and bed heating, a leveling, and then accessing the files through the SD card. If we click over here, this is all our movements. Here we can move the individual axes, also choose the amount we want to move, and if I go up here, you can see that the Z changed 10 millimeters because I went 10. So this is the current position. And then we have the cut the motors free right here or disable steppers. Yeah, I definitely like the way it's laid out and colored. So if we go to settings, we got refuel. That's going to be controlling the extruder. Advanced settings. So here they're giving you a warning. If you go into advanced, you got to know what you're doing. So if you agree that you do know, you can go in it. So we're not going to mess with that. Printer info, information about the printer, the model number, printing size, firmware version, and the Marlin version, and then the company website. And here we have initialized EP ROM. So yeah, pretty straightforward guys. I mean, we have everything we need. And then here on the middle one, if you click on the nozzle, you can see here you can adjust it by clicking on it and do it a manual entrance or you can just click on these hot buttons here which is PLA and ABS and also you have a cool down button and you can control the fan from here too so yeah pretty straightforward on everything and on the bed you get the same one and then on the leveling here it's a cute little animation it does out of home itself and then brings up the menu that we went through earlier, which was AUX, out of leveling, and then it gives you all of the readouts for the measurements. And you guys can see we're really close between each point. Now, one thing I totally forgot to do, which is kind of crazy, but we forgot to offset the Z-axis, which is the gap between the nozzle and the bed. So we need to do that right now. So once we go up or down, however much we need, we'll click on save, and that'll save it. So we're going to do that first, and then after that, we're going to click on this button here, which is the file, and it's going to read the SD card, and it looks like we do have a couple files in there we can print a calibration cube and a benchy that's usually what I always print from the start so let's go back to our leveling and I think we have to click on AOX leveling and then we'll go to the center which is one and then we'll go back and now we can set our offset which surprisingly we're a little bit far off then we're just gonna go up and down from there so it looks like we got to go down quite a bit uh, at least a couple of millimeters minus 2.2 2.35 2.4 and that's actually pretty good I think so mine's ending up being minus 2.4 and I'm gonna hit the save button and it's gonna save it and that's how you set your offset all right I think we've done everything we need to do so let's go ahead and start the cube as our first print and we do get a new menu here we'll look at it in a second so we are preheated we should be ready to go here pretty shortly and there it goes All right, so we are purging on the side. So far, our offset looks perfect. And it started the print. Now you guys probably can't see very well. This fan shroud here is really in the way of viewing it. Might have to look at it from the side. But yeah, we're pretty much perfect off the build platform. Quite happy how easy that was. Just works right off the bat. So I'm going to bring my mic in so you guys can hear the printer. It was reasonably quiet until this thing turned on. And yeah, I think it's running at full power. So it's making a lot of fan sounds. But as far as the steppers, they're actually quite quiet. Yeah, and if I stop this guy, by man, you can hear how much quieter that is. I'm kind of curious why it's so loud. Okay, so it just quieted down, so it started louder. Now that it spun a little bit, it's quieter, a lot quieter. So yeah, I guess it just had a little moment there where it was just too loud. In any case, okay, so yeah, overall, I guess with the fan not being as loud, it's not too bad. Obviously, you can hear fan sounds. The stepper motors are still audible, but they're very faint. Overall, I would say the machine is moderately quiet. So the screen does have an auto dimmable feature, and it is dimmed now, so if you touch it, it comes to life. Not sure if that's adjustable or not. Well, for me, I'd like to turn that off because I like when it's brighter so I can see it from a distance. But I guess it does help with the screen life, especially if you're just printing and walking away and never really looking at it. All right, so this is what we see when we're printing. We got the file name. Let's see, what's this over here? Okay, so we got settings which is this little button here, and we can do our Z-axis offset on the fly. We can change our nozzle temperature, our bed temperature, our printing speed, change out the filament, and also our, adjust our fan speed, which I guess let's turn it down to 200. 
and it did get quite a bit quieter. If you want to make it a little quieter, you can do that. But 255 is where it normally is. So yeah, same thing for anything else. You just click on it and enter what you want. So here we have a dial and it shows us the amount of time that's left and also how much time passed. So it's been eight minutes since we started and 26 minutes left for printing. We got a stop and pause button and here we have information like the nozzle temperature, the bed temperature and how much the Z has traveled up from where it started which is 5.1 millimeters. And on the way on the bottom we have a progress bar of 25% completed so far. And if you do click here it goes to this menu also. So yeah very intuitive and pretty much everything you need is here here and I do like this little animation here. All right so we're printing away and everything looks good and it's boogieing along with that calibration cube so we'll print that out and see what it looks like and I guess I'll go ahead and print out the benchy and we'll see how that goes. All right, so we printed out both of the prints that came with the printer. Let's click on finish printing here, and it goes back to the main menu. And I guess also moves the bed, and now it won't even give it back to me. So let's release the steppers, and now we can move it. And that's in the move section, by the way, so. In any case, the uh, cube looks pretty good, and it's gonna be kind of hard to see it in white, guys, but well, let's go ahead and see how this mat works here. And it's still actually pretty warm. It's at 54C, so yeah, it hasn't even had a chance to cool off. But yeah, the benchy's just stuck on there, and that's the great thing about these mats is that, you know, they're very flexible. It just peels right off, which is pretty incredible. Now, I think we are a little bit too close to the bed. You can see we kind of left a little mark there. And not only that, we do have like a little elephant foot. And I don't know if it's from being too close or what, but I think there's like one border around because the cube had the same thing exactly. So anyways, so on white, you're not going to really tell much. I guess we can look anyway. So that's the top here, the Y, the X. Again, really hard to tell on these uh, white prints. And this is the bottom actually, so yeah, it looks pretty much perfect, I would say. And on the benchy too, I mean, beautiful bottoms there. So if we look at the walls, very nice. The back there, stringing was very minimal. And yeah, everything looks really good. Honestly, much better than most printers that I see, at least with test prints. But yeah, I think for the next part, let's jump to the computer and slice our own models. All right, so let's check out what's on the SD card. I got it plugged in and this is what we see. So we got the user manual in PDF form. So this is a digital version of what we got. And here we have most of the parameters to the printer. So lots of useful information, including on how to operate the printer. Next file is software and drivers. And this is going to be Sovol Cura Slicer for Windows. Since I'm using Mac, this won't work for me. But if you are on Windows, you can install it from here and the profile will probably be set. But we're gonna do it from scratch, straight from Cura here in a second. We also get a models folder. Here we have the Benchy and the calibration cube. And we also have a ringing tower, interesting. I've never printed this. It's like another little test. And there's also another print. It's kind of computer glitching out there showing something else, but you have this guy here. So maybe we'll try to print this, which would be a pretty awesome print. You, can, you guys can see here the two G codes we printed and there's a file with a video of unboxing and setting up. All right, so let's open up Cura. And we're gonna click up here where the printer name is and we're gonna add a new printer. Then we're gonna click on non-network printer and a bunch of different printers are gonna pop up and we're gonna try to look for Sovol. I think they are in here and it's all alphabetical. Sovol 3D and they have the SV01 and SV02. And we'll use SV01 since this is what we have and we can rename it here. I'm just gonna add Pro to this. All right, then we're gonna just click add and this is what we see. So if we go to manage printer, machine settings, here we can see all of the parameters. Because we have an automatic bed leveling, we need to add G29 in here, right next to this G28. But I'm not too sure if it's necessary for this printer, but if you are having trouble homing, try doing that if you use this profile. But if you guys remember, this would be the same thing as any kind of Creality printer with the out of bed leveling. All right, so yeah, everything's good. Let's close this out. And this is what we see. This is our printing volume. So I'm gonna wanna do my own calibration cube as the one we printed is uh, not exactly what I usually print. So yeah, we'll go ahead and slice one and print it out so we can see a little better of what kind of walls and stuff we're looking at. But yeah, if you click on the cube, you can move it around. And also right here on the side, you can set in the parameters. Here you can scale it larger or smaller, also by dragging and then rotate it. So yeah, these are the basics. Now for this video, all we're gonna do is 
try to make sure our parameters are good here. So if you click on these little dots, choose the advanced option so you can see most of the things here that we're going to go through. You know, you can obviously play with this and fine tune it to your printer. So this is our layer height. We're going to leave it at 0.2. The rest looks good. On the shell, I like to change the wall count to three as it makes nicer walls. It only takes a little bit longer to print. The top layers, I like to change the five as it gives us a better finish. On the fill gaps between walls, we're going to turn that off or nowhere because I do like to see where the gaps are. But if you're trying to get the best finish, you might want to turn that on to everywhere. Infill for 20% is good. I'm going to keep the nozzle at 200. Maybe we'll start with 205. And the bed, I guess we'll start at 60 and run 55. That should be good for this type of build surface. Speed, I like to keep at 60. Initial layer, I like to turn it down to 15. And the skirt or brim, we can do 25 on that. I'm going to leave all this off. Retraction on. So it's set at 3 millimeters, which should be good for a direct drive. And I'm going to leave all this as it is. And we can adjust this if we get any kind of stringing or whatnot else. Print cooling. I'll leave that all the way it is. And down here at the build plate adhesion, I like to use skirt usually. And 3 lines or counts around the print and then starts printing the print. So it's kind of a good purge time and just kind of make sure everything is leveled out before it actually, you know, prints the print. So, and over here we have special modes, which spiralized mode. We'll print a few layers on the bottom and then just one layer up all around and we'll print some kind of vase or something. Yeah, that's pretty much it guys. So you can play around with these settings, tweak them to your lightning, but once you're done, we're gonna click on the slice. So the cube's gonna take 33 minutes and we're gonna go ahead and save it to the removable, then double click or right click, click or build plate, throw the bin in there maybe we'll push it back a little bit and also slice this one with the same parameters and that's going to take an hour and 38 minutes and we'll save that and now we can inject it straight from here and then take the micro sd card to the printer and access those files so yeah hopefully this little quick overview was helpful let's go print out those models and see what they turn out like All right, so we printed out the pinchy and the calibration, and I did have a little trouble, but I think that was my own doings as I am running out of my test filament, and this is what I usually use to print my benchmarks, which is the benchy and the calibration cube, and I've used this spool for over a year now, strictly for that, and it's coming close to an end and actually gave me some trouble with this benchy here, but we'll look at that in a second. Let's go ahead and start with the calibration cube. So the cube actually turned out really nice. Maybe you guys can see there. So that's our X, pretty minimal vibrations, very small amount of ghosting. And then we got the Y here, also very nice. A little more vibrations, about the same amount of ghosting. We got the X wall and the Y wall, the bottom, which is beautiful. And the top also turned out great. So yeah, the cube looks amazing and definitely above average than usual. So the two benches that we have, one of them didn't complete as the nozzle clogged for whatever reason. My speculation is the filament coming to an end on the spool sometimes has trouble, but I went ahead and printed out another benchy that was in a different filament that turned out just fine. And I haven't actually pulled it off the bed. Let's go ahead and do that. And look at that, it just comes right off. So yeah, the bed texture here has been awesome. And honestly, not using these for a while and going to those perforated glass made me remember how nice these are. I actually prefer this mat. Yeah, it might not be as durable, but it's just much more friendly and easier to print on. So if you are just getting into 3D printing and you don't want to be too frustrated, I would go with this kind of platform. And not to mention how easy it would be to take off large models. So let's start with the first one here that didn't make it all the way. The bottom looks excellent. Sides look really good. Just the whole benchy looks great, honestly. A little bit of ringing right there, not too bad. Like the layers go down very nicely. And we can kind of look at the whole thing. So we did have a little bit of stringing at three millimeters with this filament. And then with this new filament, it's more matte. You guys can see that. We actually had more stringing or a little more severe stringing. I don't know if you guys can see, but, but not terrible. This is not something you can't clean up easily. So I guess we do need to bump it up maybe to three and a half or something to see if we can get rid of it. But yeah, this one also looks great. You guys can see on the walls. So yeah, as you can see, when you change the filament, you really do get a different finish. And because this is more matte, it actually looks nicer than that glossy one. And the reason I've been using the glossy is so we could see better all the reflections. But on the 
matte here you guys can see the print looks pretty solid and <laughs> even better so yeah I mean just from these prints here the printer puts the layers down very nicely to be honest I really feel like they put a lot of effort on the hot end most manufacturers kind of like slap something on there you know whatever but Sovel here really took their time and made the hot end a really special piece and I love that part about this printer and so far everything else seems to work very well together now you do have to be careful not to accidentally bump one of the sides here on the least screw like right now if we just push on this or turn one of the sides we're gonna screw up the whole bed leveling and if you do happen to do that what you'll need to do is go back into the leveling and do a manual level and then an automatic one again so that makes me wish that it was synchronized the two leads but if you're careful and if you don't mind you know re-leveling it once in a while so far I'm really impressed with this printer there's really nothing much I can say that's bad about it so I'm gonna go ahead and print a few more models different types I'll print something in TPU since this is the rec drive extruder and also we'll do a larger spiral print going up. So right now we're printing in spiralized mode and I noticed the printer is pausing at certain places and then resuming as you can see there. So there's something in the firmware that's not allowing it to continuously print spiralized mode. And I think what's causing this is the print resume feature which is trying to remember what layer it's on and it's filling up the buffer fast. So it pauses there as you saw and it's leaving little blobs on the print. So I'm really curious if it's going to be able to even finish this print, but I am gonna let it go ahead and try to print out and see what comes out. All right guys, so yeah, we printed quite a few prints and as you can see, the spaceship did make it, which was nice to see. And overall, I'm pretty impressed with this printer as I did really enjoy using it. So we've seen all the benchies. We did have a little bit of stringy, which was fixed once I bumped it up to four millimeters retraction. So let's start with this print here. This is that ringing sample print that was included with the SD card and I went ahead and printed it out. Hopefully you guys can see here the finish on it. So it looks pretty good. There is a little bit of a ringing and the vibrations and also some layering too. You can kind of see the lines right there. So yeah, not too sure what that was all about. And going to the front here, we can see the X axis. I don't know if I can get it to focus here, but, and the Y there. So there is some ringing and some ghosting, but not a ton. And it, as we will see on the next prints that it could be just the filament. So let's look at these froggies here, starting with this green one. And by the way, everything is printed at 50 millimeters per second on the speed, 0.2 layer height, 200 on the nozzle and 55 on the bed. And there was no problem sticking for all the prints. So this little tree frog has a lot of details in his little paws and everything. So this is a pretty good test. And you guys here see that there's a pretty good angle and everything looks great under there. And and yeah, excellent print with great precision and the layers sitting beautifully. Not much stringing and just a great looking print. So yeah, I did very good with the details and you guys can see the reflections are. On the back here is the seam, so yeah. Now here we have another frog, but this one is actually printed in TPU. So I wanted to print the frog because this is quite hard because it is quite detailed, but the TPU did great. And you guys can see it is TPU as we can mend the legs here and even his body. So overall it turned out excellent I would say except for underneath here we had a little bit of melting but other than that it was great and all I did was slow down the speed from this frog to this one 50% so it just took twice as long to print as you do want to print TPU slower but I probably could have printed it a bit faster and it would have been fine. Now I think I also turned down the cooling which was a mistake and that's why we have a little bit of a droopy here but in any case this is our little TPU frog and he can clap his hands. 
So the next print we have here is actually a puzzle. And this puzzle is called Mad in China. And it's actually quite difficult to put together for some people. If you want to test out your puzzle abilities, I'll leave the link in the description. You can print it out. Now it does come scaled very tiny. So I had to scale it up 3000% on each of these to print them out. And we printed out the frame in black here, which looks really good. And red on the four puzzle pieces. And you would think, what's the big deal? There's only four. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Most everyone that gets a hold of this puzzle has a hard time. But surprisingly, it took me about 10 minutes to figure it out. And we could see on one of the pieces here, it printed out really nice. Now I don't have the fill the blanks everywhere. So if you want to check that on your slicer so you don't have gaps, that'd probably be good. But yeah, overall, great print here and a nice little challenge for you if you want to try it out. So the next print we got here is a little octopus and he actually still has the support on him. Let's see if we can break that off. There we go. So this is a great print to print to show how well the printer retracts and also sticks to the bed because there's so many pieces and they're all flexible and they all start individually and they combine as they print up. You guys can see the little octopus here looks great and a lot of retractions to each piece and there's no blobbing or anything weird. And I believe the retraction was at four millimeters for this one, which looks about right, but probably could have been bumped down to three and a half even. Would have been this good. But yeah, this is a fun little print and you guys can see on his head there. It looks great. Very even layers, nothing weird. So an excellent print here and shows how well the bed works because it stuck every little piece and nothing popped off. Another print that's a good test for the printer is this gear and it is a functional part and it prints all individual pieces here and then you should be able to spin it. Now I haven't tried to spin it yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So I like to kind of push on all the corners first before I try to spin it. So it breaks loose if there's anything touching and I do have this Allen wrench and we'll stick it in there and it fits literally perfect, which is a great sign. Like, and let's see if we'll spin it. Okay, so it's not going right away, but it looks like it's about to. And there it goes. So it has to break an initial sticking point there. And after that, it's literally perfect. Now the sticking point could be because of the Z seam. So wherever the Z goes up, it could leave just a tiny little blob there, which fuses it together depending on where it is between the pieces. So, but after that guys, you can see, I mean, it's literally perfect. And they almost never turn out this perfect. There's no effort at all to turn this thing and there's no wobble that is rare that is very very rare so excellent excellent print with one of the best precision i've seen so yeah if you need to print precise models that are functional like this this printer would do a great job here we have a large print which was included with the printer and it's the deadpool character here kind of like on a stand which took about 18 hours i did speed up the speed on this thing to 60 millimeters a second instead of 50 i think that was going to take like 24 hours so i sped it up a bit and yeah the bottom looks great there's a little bit of residue from other printing and stuff but yeah it's smooth and just just clean clean bottom and you guys saw how easy it peeled off and yeah it doesn't matter how large the print is it'll peel off easy every time so so let's start here on the top his face and you guys can see how smooth the layers went down so you can see a little bit of ringing and some minor ghosting here and there but very clean overall just amazing so if there's any kind of negative at least on my machine here it would be a little bit of ringing so we are at 60 millimeters a second a little bit quicker than usual so we're going to see a little more artifacts but yeah overall excellent detail maybe you guys can see here on the front and just a beautiful print so here we have the creator, I guess, which is eastman.xyz. Now the only issue we did kind of have is right here under not so much on this side, looks pretty good, but this on this other side, we did have a little bit of melting here. So overall, very solid print and did an excellent job printing a large print. And for the last print, we have the spaceship and I haven't pulled it off the bed. Let's see if we can just peel the back here and pop it off. And sure enough, amazingly, it was that simple. So as you guys know, we did have some trouble with this one because of spiralized mode. The only explanation we have for that is recovery mode, which takes a lot of memory to remember where the position is and then save it every time to be able to resume a print if it fails. And in spiralized mode, you can't have that on, but it did finish, which is cool. So we'll still be able to see the walls overall. One thing to mention is the height here is the full printing capability of 300 millimeters. So here we have the bottom looks great as usual. Now we can look at the walls and I was really impressed guys I mean it went down so if you ignore the little blobs that you see and you just look at the reflections of the walls 
Like it does a really, really good job being very accurate, which is impressive. And we do have this gold silky filament, which really shines. And yeah, minus the little blobs everywhere, the print looks amazing. And if they weren't all there, we would be really, really impressed with how this thing looks. And at the very top, it still didn't even melt and everything looks nice and sharp there, so. And if you do want to print in spiralless mode, there might be a way to bypass the recovery or turn it off completely and this would not be an issue. But this is the way the printer comes and that's how we printed it. So yeah guys, as you can see, I'm a pretty big fan of the SV01 Pro. I think they did a really good job putting this package together without being too expensive, which makes this a value purchase. Personally, my favorite part about the printer is the hot end extruder assembly, which even has the Creality Touch Pro. I feel like they spend a lot of time there and that's where it matters. And we can see that on the prints. Being in direct drive gives you the ability to print TPU. Large build volume of 280 by 240 by 300 tall. Dual Z axis leads, which ended up being synced very well on my printer and I had no issues with uneven printing one going faster than the other or either way. We do get this really nice touchscreen display. Great UI. 32 bit silent board from Creality. The power supply is Creality. So I kind of like to think of this machine as an ultimate Creality clone as it uses most of the Creality electronics. I like how we have the belt tensioners, easy and quick to adjust on the fly. The magnetic build surface is pretty neat. Even though it's not the newest, greatest technology, it works very well and I actually miss these type of build mats as most everyone stopped using them. And not to mention probably the most important part for newcomers especially is the out of bed leveling as it is standard here with the Creality CR Touch. So yeah, I definitely give a thumbs up for this Sovol SV01 Pro. You get pretty much everything you would want. If you're thinking about getting into 3D printing, this would be a great start. And if you're more a seasoned printer and you want something that just works great out of the box, this seems to be it also. So if you are interested in it, I'm going to have some links in the description. Check it out. And if you did enjoy this video, then hit that like button. If you want to see more 3D printing videos like this and other things I do on this channel, I got a lot more videos coming up, so stay tuned. And also check out my 3D printing playlist. I'm sure you'll find something interesting interesting there. And if you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.